Welcome to this Debaco University video with yet another collaboration with Shane from Migro. Here we're going to be looking at what the best PAR intensity for plants is. As the image shows here, the plant uh, PAR intensity versus growth rate will be compared. In addition, we'll get into carbon dioxide enrichment and how that impacts plants, as well as DLI, the daily light integral, and providing you with an easy equation to do some calculations to determine what you are giving your plants. Well, welcome Shane. Again, we've uh, got Shane from MicroGrow here. Today, we're going to be discussing optimum PAR intensity and DLI. Now, PAR intensity and PAR, we have an, uh, another video released and going into a little bit more in-depth on what that is. But we're, it basically is looking at the intensity um, of light of uh, range of spectrums. Here, we're going to be looking at how it relates to plants in a little bit more of a specific way. Starting with plants photosynthesize. Uh, so with this PAR intensity, is this basically the same needed no matter what plant I'm growing, Shane, or is there differences with that? There are definitely differences. Um, plants have developed in nature um, to succeed in different environmental conditions. So for example, there are plants which are optimized to grow with relatively low PAR intensity. Uh, plants that would grow, for example, on a forest floor, where there'd be a lot of shade. And for cannabis, cannabis uh, uh, is able to use high power intensity. So it has been shown that there is continuous uh, increase in photosynthesis um, all the way up to about 1500 micromoles mm. of power intensity, um, which is a, a high level. And mm. um, after which you get a reducing rate of return now that intensity is important because you know we're trying to maximize all of our plants and production. If we're growing a plant that needs a little less, we can cut back on that. Growing a plant that needs a little bit more, well, now we can justify that more intense light. Now with lighting, we're typically growing in indoor environments, um, and that gives some growers the option of adding CO2. And you hear a lot about this, you know, it's part of the photosynthetic equation. Um, how may that change things when related to par light intensity and in plant production? Yeah, so plants are uh, absorbing the photons from light and um, they're using that energy to photosynthesize. And photosynthesis uses CO2 um, as part of that chemical reaction. Having enriched CO2, so higher than would be available in, in the normal atmosphere, which is about 400 parts per million, mm -hmm. you increase that CO2 level. So you have a closed system. And you're supplementing that CO2 with either, you know, a, a CO2 gas or a burner or whatever system you're using. You can enrich that level of CO2. And it has been demonstrated that enriching that up to about 12 or 1300 parts per million can increase the relative growth rate by up to 30 percent. That's the, for the same in, uh, light intensity uh, and uh, environmental conditions and um, plant genetics. You can have a relative increase of growth with um, with higher or concentrated CO2 of up to 30%, which is quite extraordinary, really. Yeah, that CO2 can uh, definitely, with the light intensity, definitely help increase plant production. Keep in mind, as growers, you have to keep your water and nutrients and all, everything else supplemented as well. Uh, but lighting and CO2 is a big part of that photosynthetic equation. Now, when we're talking about this intensity of light, we're not just giving them like a burst or a flash of light. Something that's brought up is called DLI, which is looking more about the intensity of light or the summation of light that it experiences the plant has over the over a day or the lighting period. Can you go a little bit more about this DLI, maybe how it's calculated and how growers can better understand how they can apply this to the plants they're growing? Yeah, so when we measure par, uh, we're measuring par at a moment in time. Mm. Uh, so that par intensity is uh, measuring the photons, um, the intensity of uh, uh, the quantity of photons uh, over a meter squared per second. Mm. And DLI is actually measuring the amount of par that will uh, accumulate over the light cycle. So say, for example, you're running at a 12-hour light cycle, mm. you're multiplying the 12 hour light cycle by the number of minutes in that hour, by the number of seconds um, in those minutes by the instantaneous power intensity. Um, mm -hmm. To give an example, if you're running at about 800 micromoles of power 
over a 12 hour day that generally would equate to around 40 DLI, mm. um, which is considered on the upper end of what a plant can absorb over over uh, one light mm. cycle. Um, I would be used, you know, for example, to, in, in, in tomato growing if you're supplementing, um, but also can be um, related to cannabis growth as well. And that's important to keep in note if, uh, you know, if you're growing a photoperiod dependent plant and you're switching it from an 18 hour light day to a 12 hour light day, that will impact your DLI as growers. So uh, that's where people will use more intense lights and flowering to try to make up for that loss of time. Be aware, it can only go so high. The plants can only utilize it so much. And I would add to that as well, Matthew, that um, with, um, with regard to, we've got Typically, cannabis growers will be growing either photo period plants, mm -hmm. uh, which would be flowering on a 12 hour cycle, but they may also be uh, growing auto flower plants, mm -hmm. which growers would often have a 20 hour light cycle. Mm -hmm. Generally, I, could, I would recommend a, a, a lower average power intensity for um, auto flower plants because they're, they're growing over a longer day cycle. And therefore, they're going to be absorbing uh, more over that um, that longer cycle, hence the lower light intensity recommendation. Excellent. Great point. And I know if some people have explained it to me and have tried to do the same. Think about like a rain gauge, you know, you're, how much water are you accumulating over a day versus how much is falling right now? And what's falling right now would be the par. DLI would be that accumulation over a day when the lights go out, empty the empty the can out, and then you can go through and remeasure the next day. So just giving them more in a burst, like rainwater doesn't do much good for the plants, just like in light, and you actually have the chance of burning them. So Shane, thank you for the uh, detailed information there, a little good background there to hopefully allow our growers to better understand some of these complexities to help improve the efficiency of their growing operation.